welcome to my channel. My name is Rebecca. I make art stuff and I sell it at markets usually, also online, but often at markets, almost on a weekly basis. And today I'm going to show you about market displays and what I put my art prints on, specifically a DIY tutorial on how I make one for really cheap that has held up a long time. But you may be asking, where are these displays? We want to see them. Well, okay, <laughs> they're kind of big. Let me use the magic of editing to make them appear. Here they are. These things are really big and it's hard to show you, so I'm gonna change the camera angle. Okay, I hope that's a tiny bit better. Here's my display. It is made of foam core. It weighs nothing. And today I'm gonna to show you how I made this because it has saved my art business, my market business, in a big way. It's also pretty beat up, so I need to make some new ones. I have two and they take a real beating. Uh, there's some dents on the side, there's some sequins attached to the bottom where it sat in some glue at one point. But that's all to say that these things stand up to a lot of abuse and they have been taken to at least one show a week for the past six months. And I have a very small car, so it's essential that anything I bring to my market booth has to fit in my car. These two go in my back seat and they just live there. That's their home. But they've held up really well. They're really inexpensive to make. They work really well. Can you see the, there's like one, two, three shelves on here. I use these for my art prints specifically, but I've also put notepads. Uh, I used to have greeting cards on these as well, um, but they're sturdy enough that they can hold books and heavier things too, because it's just that good of a design. So what goes into making these? They take two sheets of foam core. If you don't know what foam core is, it's basically like two sheets of paper with a layer of foam in between, and I get mine at the dollar store. Here in Canada, they've gone up in price. They're like $4 a sheet, but you only need two to make one of these, so it's $8 plus a bunch of glue sticks, and I use a little bit of washi tape um, on this part to cover over the seam, uh, which has worked fine, but you don't have to cover it if you don't care. Mostly the art is covering it, so it's just my preference. Foam core sheets are, I think they're 20 inches by 26 inches, but I'll have to measure it again when I show you how to actually make this just to tell you for sure. And this is basically made up of three pieces. So there's one side piece, uh, so there's two side pieces. They are identical, they are shaped like this. Um, and then there is one piece that is making this whole river thing. That is a series of folds. Maybe you can see it better on the back. But it's basically just one piece that I've cut uh, particularly so that it zigzags like stairs and then I just glued them onto the sides. That's it. It's not complicated, but getting the numbers right can be a little frustrating. So I'm going to show you as thoroughly as I can how, like a diagram on how to make this because it was a little confusing at first. Um, but I had, and the two that I made are different because the first time I made it, I made the steps wider and I actually ended up liking this version better, which has narrower steps because I made a sign to go on top of it. And this is even taller. How am I going to fit this in frame? Okay, let's try. Here is the sign that goes on top. It is just another piece of foam core with notches on the side cut in. So let me show you, it just slots on. Like that. And then I put my art prints in there and it's cute. This is covered in um, clear, with like, like sh the clear rolls of stuff you can laminate. So it, yeah, that fits in the frame there. It's really shiny, but this one is weatherproofed basically. The foam core that I buy for some reason is like whiteboard material on one side, so it is shiny and thicker, and the other side is like a paper texture. So if you wanted to reinforce this for rain, I mean I, this has been rained on a bunch of times and just dried out and it's been fine, but you could also use that roll and put it on and then it would be more durable even so. You could also paint it, decorate it, I've thought about painting this a lot but I always chicken out. And like I said, I made these. Uh, at least six months ago and they've been in my car and only now is one piece of the glue on the back just starting to loosen a little bit so I'm just gonna glue it back up and we're good to go. Okay so that's enough preamble you can see what it looks like you can customize it to fit whatever you want to put on it it's a really low cost solution if you are doing an outdoor event you may want to be tactical about adding some sort of weight to this because it will blow away which is not gonna be fun but if you're selling art prints at an outdoor market you already have issues with things blowing away so um, ideal for indoor events, could be adapted for outdoor if you want to clip on anything. The nice part of this also, the back side of it will be hollow so you can like tuck stuff underneath if you need to store stuff during your show, which is what I do. I hide like extra prints and bags and stuff behind it. 
Okay, I think that's all the notes I need to give you before we get started. So let's get started on this big project. Before I get into showing you how I actually do the tutorial, I wanted to show you the pattern that I'm following just to, some people might find this easier to visualize than me flailing around with big sheets of foam core. So I have the two boards that I'm working with. I'm just gonna do these little drawings and show you how to cut them. So I have two of them. They measure 20 inches by 30 inches and I'm working in inches for all of this. So starting with the one on the left, that is going to be our end pieces. The dotted lines in red indicate where I am cutting through the board to make three separate pieces out of this one board. The top little rectangle is scrap, but I'll show you in a second what I use that for. The bottom two are going to be seven inches on one end and 13 inches on the other for each of them to make two, um, I'm not sure, is that, it's not a trapezoid, a rhombus? One of the two of those shape. And when you cut them out, it looks a little bit like this. Now we have two shapes that are the end pieces for our display and they are seven inches by 20 inches by 13 inches and that sloped side just connects the seven and 13. Uh, I didn't actually measure it. So we have those two pieces and there's also that leftover piece and I'm going to cut that into one inch by 20 inch strips that I'll use at the end of this project just to create little, uh, little barriers that will keep the art prints from sliding off. But if you're not putting art prints on, uh, you don't necessarily have to do this step, but I'll show you in the tutorial part. The other sheet is going to be the steps. So we are, because it's 30 inches tall, I'm going to divide it into three groups of 10 and each of those groups of 10 is gonna become a three inch and a seven inch section. And I'm not cutting all the way through these uh, lines. These are gonna be scores so they're easy to fold. Um, if you accidentally do, you can just tape it back together, but they're intended to be scored um, on either side of the foam core to make it turn into stairs really easily. You can see here that the steps are gonna be seven inches down, three inches for the flat level, seven inches down again, three, seven, and three in that zigzag formation. So that's what we're doing with this second piece. In order to make it zigzag the right way, we need to do three scores on one side and two scores on the other side to make right angles. So I hope that is clear and makes sense. You're going to be choosing one side to do all these scores underneath the three inch mark and the other side, you can do all the scoring under the seven inch mark. So one side will have three and one side will have two score lines. I hope that makes sense. I know that if you're not pattern minded, um, it may be easier to see me do it. So you're gonna see both methods, both this pattern and my tutorial. This may not be my most elegant filming experience because typically I film in my studio on a white table uh, with nice studio lights so you can see my DIYs really well. But because the foam core I'm working with is white, I think it would be invisible. So I'm gonna do it on my coffee table, which is kind of awkward. I'm filming this on my camera or my, on my phone because my camera isn't like the big filming rig for something else. So we're just gonna bear with me. I hope that this information is valuable enough that you'll put up with these weird angles and my lack of a good microphone. So first, I'm gonna show you all the materials that you'll need for this project. Here's everything we're gonna need. Wait, I forgot something too. Now I have everything we need. Here are two sheets of foam core. These are, like I said, from the dollar store here in Canada, Dollarama. They are $4 each Canadian, but I believe you can get them at normal dollar stores everywhere. You can also get them at office supplies. Not all of them will have the shiny side. Can you see this is, where's the light? Does this look shiny? What am I doing? No, anyways, they are like shiny on one side. The only reason I think that is good is because it's stronger than the paper sides, but you can always reinforce it with tape as well. It doesn't have to be the specific kind. You can get these at Staples. I think there's comparable things that are meant for presentations at schools, but alternately, you could also just use some cardboard and paint it, like any lightweight material. That is a big sheet. How big are these though? Hold on. Okay, tool number one, measuring tape. These are 30 inches by 20 inches, 30 by 20. In terms of other materials, I have two rulers, just because this is wider than one ruler, so I sometimes need two, uh, just in case. I have painter's tape. This is, um, painter's tape is like the stuff that peels off easily, it doesn't stick and ruin things. Um, you don't necessarily need this, but it can be good to hold things in place as you're like doing, figuring it out. I've got a hot glue gun and some extra sticks, a Sharpie marker, and uh, my X-Acto knife. And you probably also want a cutting mat. Um, I probably will go get mine because I 
don't know that I want to cut on this glass surface. But yeah, a cutting mat. And that's it. You can probably, if you're crafty, you might have all these things at your house already. Maybe aside from the foam core, but uh, that's okay. So I've got one of the boards here. And the first thing I'm going to do is make these side pieces. Now this is the one that I want to replicate. I have the other one back here. Uh, you can, I don't know if you can see the difference, but this one is wider here and shorter here. Actually, is it shorter? No. It's just a lot wider here. And that means that the steps inside are wider, and I actually want these for art prints. So I'm going to follow the one that's a little bit narrower. That looks like this. So I'm just going to measure these to make sure that I know what I'm doing, because I want to replicate this exact one. And let's see how many, what, what size it is. So this is 20 inches tall, so that's the full height of this board right here. So that means I don't have to cut it that direction. And depth-wise, it is oops, really lightweight. Mm, let's call that 13 inches. So that means that we are going to be measuring something that is 20 by 30, and then I guess I should measure the top as well, and then 7 on the top. And then I will connect the 13 to the 7 on an angle. Does that make sense? I mean, I've shown you pictures and diagrams, hopefully. So, so let's try and measure that out on this board. So we already measured that this is 20. So I need to go 13 here and then 7 here. And then I'm going to do 13 here and 7 here and a straight line. And then I'll cut on the diagonal so we're not wasting any cardboard. Okay, cool. I've never done a tutorial this big, so I'm really hoping this is working out. Okay, I've made my little dots in the right spots. Now the first cut I'm going to do is from this end to that end to get rid of this piece, which is extra. Okay, so I'm going to... Am I going to draw a line? Let's draw a line! Okay, ow. That could have been really bad. Okay, a very poorly done but relatively clear line. Next, I'm going to draw on this line that connects diagonally. I'm not going to say this is my best artistic work, um, but, you know, I think I deserve some credit for trying my best. Okay, the next step is to cut along these lines. I'm going to be using this exacto knife. The reason I'm not using scissors is because it would start to be really difficult once you get a few inches in because I don't want this foam core to crease at all. So I'm going to be using the exacto knife. Should I use a cutting mat? Let's just try without. I didn't scratch the table. The nice thing about the way that I'm cutting this, so now we have the two sides, is that the sides that sit on the table are the top and bottom here, which I'm not messing with. So even if my line here, which that's pretty level, I did a good job there. But even if it was a little wobbly, um, it doesn't matter because that's going to be on the back. Okay, there we go. Two equally sized, well cut pieces of foam core. Okay, I had to pause for a second because I'm trying to think of the logic puzzle of what did I do differently last time? Because on this one, the shiny side is on both sides. Um, but on this one, obviously the shiny sides, one is on the inside, one is on the outside. What did I do differently? I guess the last time, let me show you as a demonstration. So you can do this if you care about having shiny sides, whatever. Last time, I think I did it like this and cut a weird triangle in the middle. So, okay, so that's what you need to do basically is measure it and cut it a little bit differently if you want both sides on the exterior of your display to be shiny if you have the same kind of foam core as me. I now have this extra usable piece which honestly would make a good back, job, back thing for a sign on my booth, so that's cool. Um, if I cut it this way, I'd have this triangle or even this way, I'd have like a triangle and a thing. Um, but yeah, you may want to, this is like pretty basic pattern, like grade one <laughs> math class, I feel. But yeah, like you could cut it like this and get both sides the same texture. I don't, I think it's perfectly fine. So I'm going to do it this way. I'm going to be doing it this orientation. So this is the width of our display. It's going to be as wide as the short side, which is 20 inches. 
Alternately, I think you could do it this way um, and have it be this size, but you might need a, a third piece of foam core to make all the steps happen if you want it to be extra wide. Okay, hi, it's one day later. Um, the sun started going down, so I decided to finish this video today. Okay, so uh, we are making these steps. And I just measured, I want this unit to be the same size as the new one I'm making. And so the size of, yeah, you can see all this here. It is seven inches down, three inches out, seven down, three out, seven down, three out. So altogether that makes 30 inches, which is the full length of this. So I don't need to cut it. I just need to score it to make those steps happen. So first I'm going to measure along the card and indicate where I'm gonna be doing my cuts and folds. And I'm gonna do this on both sides because I need to make it do a zigzag. So it's gonna have some scores on one side, some scores on the other. I will show you how this works if that's confusing. I want to have the non-shiny side on the inside because I think it distracts a little bit from the art if it's shiny. So I'm going to start on the other side here and I'm gonna remove the price tag. So I'm gonna start measuring and I'll just use the ruler and go down on both sides and then I'll flip it over and measure on there as well. And then we will start cutting and scoring. Okay, now I have to use a little bit of like spatial relations to figure out where the bends and where the folds are. So I'm going to face this up. This is the side that I want to be showing. So I'm working from the top. Like this is the top of the display and this will be the bottom. So the top is the first seven inch drop and then it's going to fold out like that. So the first top score mark is going to be on the back side so that it can fold in outward. Gosh, this is hard to explain. I hope I come up with a good way to make a diagram for this um, on my computer when I'm editing this video. So that means the second mark down, which is 10 inches from the top, so seven, then three, that's gonna be cut on this side. So I'm going to make a line across so that I know that that is where I am cutting. Okay, pencil acquired. So second line down, 10 inches from the top. If you have a yardstick, that would actually make this project a lot easier, but who has a yardstick? There we go, one line, and then we will skip the next one, which is seven inches down, and three will be another fold on the same direction. And then the bottom one is a fold out as well. So on the side that faces the front of your display, there's going to be two cuts. And when I say cuts, I don't mean all the way through. I mean, we're just scoring it enough that it can bend. So I'm gonna be cutting through the top layer of the foam core and not the bottom layer on the back. I've put the shiny side on the back, both for the aesthetic reasons I mentioned, but also because this layer is thicker. Um, it's like a bit harder to cut through than this top matte layer. So it's gonna be a little bit stronger on the back side. If you find that you are having any stability issues, just some clear masking tape over the folds after you bend them will totally hold it together and you shouldn't have any problems. So that's gonna be what I score on that side. I'm gonna flip it over, and that means that I'm gonna be doing three on this side because there's five bends in total. Now we're just gonna be making lines on the ones that we didn't make lines on on the other side. So three inches from the bottom, 10 inches up from that, 10 inches up from that. Yes, that is, that is right. <laughs> That kind of shows up. You probably can't see it because I'm more just like indenting this layer because the pencil's not going to show up on that whiteboard surface. Okay, now with everything marked and scored, I'm going to take my X-Acto knife and very carefully score these. So like I said, I'm only going through one top, the top layer at a time. The foam in between will kind of just crack however you bend it. So it's more just about scoring what's on here. Do I trust myself to freehand this based on the lines? I'm just gonna freehand it, but you could always use a, a yardstick if you can find one. So there's the first one. You see, I didn't cut through to both sides and I'm just gonna use the edge of my table to kind of crack it. There we go. So there's our first little bend in the steps. 
and that is the very bottom of the display. So I'm just going to keep going up on the back side like that, then I'll flip it over and do the front ones, and then we'll have zigzags. So we have the back side, which looks like this, and we just oh, pops right back into. Huh, okay, I'm just going to flip it, flip it over and cut on this side. This side's a little bit easier because it's uh, the softer side; it's not the whiteboard material. Just a note: if you do accidentally cut through both sides, you can just use, like I said, some clear masking tape to hinge them both together. Um, if you do cut all the way through, I would say put a piece on both sides while it's bent, just to get it to stay stable. Um, but yeah, hopefully you can do it part way like I did. Okay. All right. Moment of truth. Let's see if I did it all right. There we go. Steps. Ah, that's pretty good, right? Okay, great. So I see some pencil. I'm just going to erase um, just on the lines there, but ultimately very pleased with that. And then we have our sides, which the only thing left to do is glue them all together. So you can see, nope, impossible to do with one hand. Three sevens equals 21, and this is 20 inches. But as you can see um, on this one, there is an inch um, extra above which is great because it actually helps stabilize the sign that I made. So it will be one inch above this. I hope this is still a good tutorial. I am trying very hard, but um, numbers are not my specialty. But I'm really proud of these things and I built them and they've lasted a long time. So just bear with me if uh, it's a little scattered. The next step is basically to plug in your hot glue gun, wait for it to heat up, and then start gluing A to B. The way that I think is easiest to do this is you take whichever one of your sides you want to start with and just put it flat on the table, pop this into zigzag formation, easier said than done. Well, you can start at the bottom, honestly. And then, upside down, you want to position it on top and then start gluing along the seams like this, just along the edges, that's going to kind of encase it. So this is where you could use the painter's tape to position this ahead of time. I'm just going to free wheel it. Is that the phrase? No, I'm just going to freestyle this, freehand it. I'm just going to do it freely. And uh, it'll all come together, but um, basically you just need to attach it to one side and then you just put the other side on like a hat and it sits right on and it works great. So I'm going to heat up my glue gun and then we'll put this together. So I am going to show you just an up close of the one I made before to try and understand the way I'm going to start lining up the pieces. I think my glue gun's heated up, so let me just grab it. So here's a close up of what the bottom looks like. These pieces right here, like this little lip on all these, are extra pieces I glued on afterwards from leftover um, foam core. So that's not actually part of the construction step. The bottom step starts at the corner of this front piece. So right there, does that make sense? So we're gonna line it up like that. I'm also going to be using these rulers to help create right angles uh, because I want all my shelves to be on right angles. So um, I'll just kind of show you as I do that. I hope this angle is good for filming this. There, hopefully you can see this a little bit better. This first attachment is pretty easy. We are basically just lining up Oops. the wide end of our end piece, right? And I'm putting it down, so this is the bottom of it, and this is the front edge right here. Attaching this flat along the bottom edge. So I'm gonna grab my glue gun, which yes, does reach over here, excellent. And I'm gonna start on the inside, and then I'm just gonna take some hot glue and pipe it along the inside seam. If you don't mind burning your hands, just run it through the hot glue to get the excess off and close that seam. I'm just going to hold this for a second until the hot glue cools off and then I will be able to bend the next part. So the next step is this bend here and that is going to become our first level for displaying. 
Now I want to make sure that this right here is a right angle so that I can have the print stand up straight and the whole thing kind of combine straight. So I'm just going to use my ruler and use the flat end to try and make sure that this is more or less a right angle. I think that looks pretty good. So now I'm going to glue along this seam here. And once these two are secure, I'm just going to flip this around and do the same on the back of the piece right here, just to add more reinforcement. So this one is mostly dry and secure. So I'm just going to carefully rotate this whole thing so I can reinforce the back of those two sides I just attached. So I'm going to just glue along this seam, which is the reverse of the one I just did. And I'm going to add some extra glue right to the corner there just to reinforce it a little bit. After getting these initial pieces in, it's really just a matter of adding right angles to zigzag the steps up the base here. And then when we reach the top, we just reinforce all these back sides that we glue like that. And uh, then you pop the top on, flip it over and do it in reverse. So I'm just going to carefully try and make some right angles. I have glued both sides of all the zigzags. I'm gonna grab the camera here and just show you what it looks like up close. This is what it looks like so far. So you can see it's attached to the base um, and it has the shelves kind of attached now. I can actually pick it up. It's pretty well secured. And the front looks like that. So we have the little extra overhang at the top, which is fine because that helps secure a sign if you're gonna put it there. And also if you're doing like art prints, which is what I'm sizing this for, then um, it'll be covered by the print anyways. I can actually let that stand like that. That's more reinforcement to keep it stable and also creates a bigger cubby for you in the back. But if you were leaning this against something or you needed to have, I don't know, a narrower display, you could just cut a couple inches off of that piece as well and of the other end that we're just about to add. This is what it looks like from the front right now, by the way. And as you can see, the seams, sorry, my lighting keeps changing. But the seams along the side look good. The glue is not very noticeable at all. Um, so now we're just going to glue this last end cap piece <laughs> to the shelf to make it all stand up together. So I'm going to do this by setting this one down. And this is the direction in which the shelf will go on top of it. And I'm just going to line up that bottom piece first of all. So we have the slant side on the front here facing you and facing the front of the shelf and that's where it's going to meet. So I'm just going to start with that point of attachment and uh, then it should be pretty stable momentarily. So here is the display stand. There are still some hot glue strings on it. I think I ended up using like three glue sticks, so not very many to get it done. Um, it's really sturdy. Uh, and very lightweight still. You, you could basically use it like this if you had like items you want to just put on it that didn't need to be on an angle. Because I'm going to be putting art prints on it, I want to have a little stopper like here, here, and here to keep it from falling off. So all I'm going to do is grab some of that scrap foam core and cut some long strips that are one inch each, pop it on, glue it on. And that is why on the old one, on the old one, which is right here, I have some washi tape covering up where that seam is because I thought it was a little bit obvious. So you can, and, and it's like a white and gray washi tape. Yeah, but that's the last step. And then you have a display. You already have a display, look at this thing. Now I have two that are the right size for art prints. So I'm very excited. Okay, now I have three 20 inch by one inch sticks that I'm going to attach to each of these decks to keep my art prints from flying away into space. Well, there you have it, added in the little tabs. Now I will grab some prints and show you how these look. 
So I've got some of my greeting cards here and you can see you can put the greeting cards along. I would say you can definitely fit three comfortably, but I also have put big stacks of them before to like hold a lot of inventory in one place, especially at Christmas. Um, I have my cards on this kind of stand and it worked really well. I've also usually put two prints per level. So you could do like, these are all the same design, sorry, I didn't show you diverse of designs. Uh, but yeah, you can add them here and because of this little lip right here, they don't fall off, but they're still really visible. There's enough space between them that you can still see the design really clearly. They're not like blocking each other too much. So I find this size works really well to create a display. People can like look at all the pieces and see all the detail. Capybara, that's my best selling piece of art. <laughs> so that's what the display looks like. And I will usually on my table right now have these two beside each other. And I have an eight foot table at my weekly market. So that takes up about half of my table and just fill it full of prints. And I have the extras in a folder um, behind my table to restock. But I usually put two of each design out and I just replenish as uh, things sell. So that's kind of it for our tutorial on how to build a display stand. The only thing left I have that I can tell you about are the signs that I made for it, which go on top. So let me just grab that sign and I'll show you again. So this is what the sign looks like. It just slots in at the top. Um, and this is just one single piece of foam core, the same stuff I used for this. And the way that I designed this is that, first of all, created a new canvas in Procreate that was the size of the foam core, so 30 inches by 20 inches. That didn't give me a lot of layers I could work with, but it's fine, I just drew this all in one layer. So I illustrated this shape, keeping one side flat and the rest of the design just kind of up and filled the space as much as I could. When I was done, I exported that as a PDF and then I used Adobe Acrobat to print it as a poster. So I just opened up the giant PDF and when I hit print, it gives you an option to print it as a poster, which means that it puts it on separate sheets of paper. So I didn't do an amazing job, so you can kind of see, but there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight pieces of printer paper that went into tiling this design. I just took those pieces of paper, glued them to the foam core with like a glue stick, and then cut out the shape, which was not the easiest because I wanted it to be this like shrub shape. Uh, I cut it out to look like this. And then I used a roll of laminate, um, like clear laminate, to cover the front so it's glossy and the back of this is the glossy side of the foam core. After that, I just measured very carefully to figure out where these notches would go because basically they sit over each of the side pieces. And I actually bought double-sided Velcro to try and uh, help it stay, but honestly, this is a really snug fit and I've never had it blow over. I do do an indoor market, so I can't tell you how this will do outdoors and this is kind of a big wind sale if you put it outside, but I've never had an issue with it indoors. It catches people's eye, it's branded to look like my art, and you can put whatever you like on it. I didn't put a price on this intentionally because I want to be able to be flexible and do sales, or if I want to increase my prices over time, I don't have to remake the whole sign. If you want a more specific tutorial, like you want to watch me make one of these, I can do that for sure. Just let me know in the comments what you think. Um, I can always make a new seasonal one. This one's kind of springtime. I might like to make an autumn colored one. But anyways, that's the end of the tutorial. I hope you found this helpful and maybe it inspired you for your booth. I'm gonna do some other videos about how I set up my booth and design displays for it. And I have done so many different booth layouts over the years for different products and things that I have a big collection of photos I can show as well. So I think we'll do another video looking at other types of booth displays but this tutorial I hope was helpful. If you liked it, please give me a thumbs up. Consider subscribing to my channel. I do lots of content about my art business, my market business, and other things TBD, but I'd love any ideas for content you want to see from me in the comments. Okay, that's it. I hope this is helpful. If you make one of these, post on Instagram and tag me or something. It would be really cool to see uh, if anyone else does this pattern. Um, and I hope it wasn't too confusing. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Have a great day. See ya.